Now we will talk about the artery supply of the tongue. The tongue, actually it is supplied by the branches of the external carotid artery. We know the common carotid artery, it is divided into two parts. One is the internal carotid artery, another one is the external carotid artery. And the branches of the external carotid artery actually supplies the tongue. At first, the chief artery of the tongue is the lingual artery, which is a direct branch of the external carotid artery. So in the picture you can see, this is the lingual artery. So this lingual artery again divided into dorsal lingual branches and deep lingual branches. So ultimately this lingual artery is the main artery supply of the tongue. Secondly, you will find the facial artery. The facial artery has two branches, one is tonsillar branches, another one is the ascending palatine branches. So ascending palatine branch and tonsillar branch of the facial artery, they supplies the tongue. And last of all, the ascending pharyngeal artery, which is the branch, direct branch of the external carotid artery. This ascending pharyngeal artery, which comes from the directly external carotid artery, supplies the tongue. So what are the arteries we have got? We have got the chief artery of the tongue, that is the branches of the lingual artery, that is the deep lingual artery and dorsal lingual artery, tonsillar branches of the facial artery and ascending pharyngeal artery, which is a direct branch of the external carotid artery. Now we will move to the venous drainage of the tongue. The venous drainage of the tongue actually it drains into the superficial group of vein and deep group of vein, deep group of vein and ultimately it drains into the internal jugular vein. So all the superficial and deep group of vein coming from the tongue they, in, they drains into the internal jugular vein. Now come to the lymphatic drainage. The lymphatics of the tongue is consist of four sets of lymph node group. So four sets of lymphatics drained into the tongue. They are the apical. Number two is the marginal. Number three is the central. And last of all is the dorsal. So these four sets of lymphatics ultimately drain the lymphatics of the tongue and ultimately all of the lymphatics drain into the submandibular lymph node all the lymphatics ultimately drain into the submandibular submental submandibular group of lymph node and jugular digestic lymph node or jugular homohyoid group of lymph node. So all the lymphatics from the four sets ultimately drain into the submental, submandibular, jugular digestic lymph node and jugular homohyoid group of lymph node. And these lymphatics of the tongue has some peculiarities. Usually the lymphatics usually follow the course of the blood vessels but the lymphatics of the tongue do not accompany the blood vessel. Now we will move to the developmental source or how the development tongue development occurs. There are two lateral lingual swelling and one median lingual swelling that is known as tubercular impar. So a pair of lingual swelling and a median swelling that is tubercular impar from this three swelling actually anterior two third of the tongue is developed and this anterior two third of the tongue is developed from this lingual swelling and this lingual swelling comes from the first branchial arch first branchial arch and you know the first branchial arch the nerve of the first branchial arch is the Mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. Mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. That's why the anterior two third is supplied by the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. Now, come to the 
posterior one third of the tongue. It actually develops from a median elevation that is known as hypobronchial eminence. Look at that the hypobronchial eminence it develops from the fusion of the second, third and part of the fourth branchial arches. But eventually when the developmental process goes on this third pharyngeal arch it overgrows over the second and the fourth branchial arch and ultimately it develops from the third branchial arch and we know the nerve which develops from the third branchial arch that is the glossopharyngeal nerve so look at that posterior one third it develops from the third branchial arch and the nerve of the third branchial arch is the glossopharyngeal nerve so all the sensations of the posterior one third of the tongue is done by the glossopharyngeal nerve last of all the most posterior part the most posterior part of the tongue it develops from the fourth branchial arch the fourth branchial arch and you know the fourth branchial arch uh, the nerve of the fourth branchial arch this is the superior laryngeal nerve superior laryngeal nerve that's why the most extreme extreme part of the tongue the sensory supply is done by the superior laryngeal nerve which is a branch of the internal laryngeal nerve which comes from the vagus nerve so how the tongue development occurs the tongue develops from the anterior two third it develops from the two lateral lingual swelling and one median swelling that is known as tubercular impar it develops from the first branchial arch and as the first branchial uh, nerve of the first branchial arch is the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve so that's why the anterior two third the sensory supply is done by the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve that is the branch uh, nerve of the first arch and actually the general sensation is done by the lingual nerve and special sensation is done by the corda tympani nerve and actually this lingual nerve it is the post traumatic branch of the first arch it is the post traumatic branch of the first arch and corda tympani nerve which is a branch of the facial nerve it is a pre traumatic branch of the first branchial arch pre-thematic branch of the first branchial arch so look at that all these things are developed from the first branchial arch and last of all we told that the posterior one third of the tongue it develops from the hypobronchial eminence in midline swelling which develops from the fusion of the second third and fourth branchial arch eventually the third grows up and overlies over the second and fourth and you know the nerve of the third branchial arch is a glossopharyngeal nerve that's why posterior one third is uh, developed is supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve and extreme posterior part is developed from the fourth branchial arch the nerve of the fourth branchial arch is the superior laryngeal nerve that's why most extreme posterior part is supplied by the superior laryngeal nerve and the muscles the muscles of the tongue where it develops from the muscles of the tongue develop from the occipital mitom the muscles of the tongue it develops from the occipital mitom so all the summaries are uh, seen can be seen in this picture look at that anterior two third of the tongue is developed from the two lateral lingual swelling and uh, posterior one third of the tongue it's developed from the cranial part of the hyperbronchial eminence and other part of the hyperbronchial eminence from there the posthumous part of the tongue is developed now we will learn some congenital anomalies. At first, the term is agglossia. Agglossia means absence of tongue. If the tongue is not developed, we call this agglossia. Number two, hemiglossia. If the half of the tongue, if the half of the tongue is not developed, we call it hemiglossia. The lingual thyroid. Number three is the lingual thyroid. If the median thyroid duodenum fails to grow caudally and persists within the substance of tongue, this is called lingual thyroid. So lingual thyroid, that means the thyroid gland will be within the lingua, but that means tongue. Thyroid, gland, thyroid glands will be persist in the tongue. We told that the foramen cecum, here the thyroid gland at first uh, developmental process starts here, then it descend downwards and go to the neck. But if the thyroid gland fails to descend and if it persists in the tongue, we call this lingual thyroid, that means thyroid within the lingua or tongue number four that is thyroglossal cyst so we told that this thyroid gland it um, 
descends downwards to the neck through a pathway or duct that is known as thyroglossal duct. If the thyroglossal duct persists and form a cystic swelling, we call this thyroglossal cyst. Last of all, the bifid tongue. Look at that. If these two lateral lingual swelling fails to fuse in the midline, it looks like a tongue of a snake. We know the tongue of a snake is a bifid tongue. Bifid tongue. So if the lateral lingual swelling fails to fuse, the tongue will be like this, bifided, midline division. This is called bifid tongue. Last of all, most important congenital anomalies of the tongue, that is the tongue tie, or its name is ankyloglossia. Tongue tie or ankyloglossia. What is this? This is formed due to the shortening of the frenulum lingui, which produces disturbance of the speech. So look at that. This is the frenulum lingui the midline mucus fold which connects the tongue with the floor of the mouth. This is frenulum lingui. So if the frenulum lingui is shortened, so it will be uh, more closely attached to the floor of the mouth. So there will be difficulty in movement of the tongue and it will produce disturbance of the speech. So shortening of the frenulum lingui is known as the tongue tie or ankyloglossia, which produces difficulty of the speech. So last of all, we will talk about the um, summary of the tongue. So what are the questions can be asked from the tongue? We will discuss from first to last. At first, it is asked, okay, before going to this, we will talk about another clinical anatomy. That is the 12th cranial nerve palsy. That is 12th cranial nerve palsy. So what is this? We know all the muscles of the tongue is supplied by the 12th cranial nerve, that is the hypergosal nerve. So if any injury to the 12th cranial nerve, so there will be impaired motor supply to the tongue. So if there is impaired motor supply to the tongue of the left side, the tongue will be paralyzed, it cannot move. So tongue will be deviated to the left side. If the left side 12th cranial nerve palsy occurs, if the injury to the 12th cranial nerve on the left side occurs, for example, so left-sided tongue muscle cannot be work, they will be paralyzed and the tongue will be deviated to the left side. So by seeing the deviated tongue, seeing the deviated tongue, we can have an idea that the patient has a cranial nerve palsy, that is a 12th cranial nerve palsy. Now what are the questions that can be asked from the tongue? Number one, question from the tongue it will be asked that is the what kind of organ this is this is a muscular organ what kind of muscle this is skeletal muscle number two the question will be the function of the tongue number three you have to show the morphology or parts of the tongue number four the taste uh, sorry the papilla the papilla present in the dorsal surface that is valid papilla, phyllohyoid, fingiform and for uh, valid fungiform, foliate papilla and filiform papilla. You have to know what are their number, where they are located and most importantly that is the filiform papilla which does not contain any test part except filiform papilla all the papilla of the tongue contains test part. Number five, you have to know from the tongue that is the differences between the oral and pharyngeal part of the dorsal surface of the tongue. Number six, you have to know the um, taste modalities of the tongue. That means where we can feel that sweet taste, where, where we can feel the sour taste, where we can feel the bitter taste. Number seven, the most important thing, the muscles of the tongue. What are the muscles of the tongue? Intrinsic and extrinsic muscles with their name and with the function. If we tell in one sentence, the man's function of the extrinsic muscle is the to alter the position of the tongue. Alter the position of the tongue. And function of the intrinsic group of muscles is the alter the shape of the tongue. So this is definitely will be asked in the fiber with no doubt. 
from the muscles next which muscles from the bulk of the tongue that is the genioglossus muscle and which muscle acts as a safety valve of the tongue that is the genioglossus and why it is called safety glossa, uh, safety muscle we already discussed and last of all um, you know the nerve supply nerve supply is very much important nerve supply will be definitely asked if one question is asked from the tongue that is the nerve supply so we will divide into motor supply and sensory supply among them the motor supply is so much important because all the muscles of the extensic and intrinsic group will supplied by the 12th cranial nerve except the plateral glossus that is supplied by the cranial part of the accessory nerve and for the sensory modalities we will divide it in anterior two third and posterior one third then uh, the artery supply of the tongue is also important uh, the artery supply is actually supplied by the branches of the external carotid artery so you will find some lingual artery you will find some facial artery and you will find some ascending pharyngeal artery lingual artery facial artery and ascending pharyngeal artery last of all uh, lymphatics is not so much important that's last of all congenital anomalies and the developmental developmental source and it's a congenital anomalies among the congenital anomalies you have to know four to five names and most importantly what is tongue tie tongue tie and uh, lingual thyroid it is two a must you have to know tongue tie that is the shortening of the uh, frenulum lingui and lingual thyroid that means failure of the thyroid gland to descend and it remains the tongue it remains a persistent state in the tongue so that's all from the tongue so read the tongue uh, very carefully because it is an important visitor for the both the tongue and as well as in the viva examinations and last of all i want to tell something some clinical correlation that is easily not asked but if you have, uh, this is nice to know if you know the tongue is the most important site of the developing cancer so if any cancer develops at the tongue it easily actually occurs at the lateral side of the tongue tongue is a common site of the cancer formation and the tongue by seeing the tongue we can identify any disease such as uh, anemia jaundice cyanosis and actually the cancer of the tongue it actually involves the lateral margins of the anterior two third of the tongue lateral two third of the anterior margin lateral two third sorry uh, lateral margin of the anterior two third of the tongue here the 64 percent carcinoma occurs and posterior one third of the tongue here the 20 percent carcinoma will occur so that's all from the tongue. Thank you, everyone.